Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. Coming from somebody who remembers walking to the dealership and buying the 1991 Mustang brand new, it's hard to believe that the newest Fox Body Mustang is over 22 years old. Like any car that's older, these cars are considered classics and many of them are in need of restoration. One area that's really easy to make your car seem a lot fresher on the interior is to replace the carpet. Over time, carpet sees a lot of dirt, a lot of abuse, and generally just gets worn out. This 91 Mustang Coupe behind me spent a lot of years as a police car, meaning the carpet's really in bad shape. So today we're going to show you how to replace the carpet in your Fox Body Mustang. Our ACC carpet looks just like your original nylon carpet and is a direct replacement for your Fox Body Mustang, which will require minor trimming. This is available for all models from 79 through 93 in all of the factory colors. Our carpet comes with the rubber heavy duty mat where your heel's going to go and has a factory style underlayment as well. For this installation, you'll need a quarter inch ratchet, 7 millimeter socket, 8 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 11 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, short extension, 3 8 ratchet, 15 millimeter socket, T50 Torx bit, 15 millimeter wrench, Phillips head screwdriver, T20 Torx bit, pick or an awl, and some new fresh razor blades. The carpet's going to come rolled up in a box. If you live in a warm climate or it's warm outside when you're doing the insulation, let it sit out in the sun outside of the box for a little while, maybe an hour or so. It'll actually make the carpet a lot softer, make it easier to install. Even if it's a cold area, at least spread the carpet out, let it sit for a little bit of time while you take your interior out of your car. After 24 years of abuse, our 91 Mustang's carpet has definitely seen better days. It's stained, it's faded, it's ripped, it's definitely time for a replacement. First step of the installation is to remove the interior. We'll start with the seats. Now we'll slide the seat back and release the front nuts. Our front seat nuts actually still have the original coverage, which are hard to find. Do it there, just grab a little screwdriver, push on that clip, pop them off. Now we'll tilt the seat forward. It up. You want to make sure there's no wires underneath. If you have a lumbar car, there could be wires there. In case of ours, we know there's nothing there. We'll move the seat. Once we have this seat out, we're going to move both the seat belt sides, our door sill plates, our kick panels, and our rear trim panels. Next, we'll remove the door sill plate, which is going to be held in by four screws. In the case of ours, it has one left. These are all excellent parts to consider replacing while you have it out. Now we're going to remove the kick panel, which normally would have a push pin here that somebody would remove for us. Once that's out, simply pull out and pull down on it to release and remove. Now you want to repeat the process on the driver's side, then we'll move on to removing the back seat. Now we're going to move the back seat, stick your hand between the two cushions, get a grip on the bottom, simply pull up and out. To make it easier to remove the carpet, remove the bottom screw from the trim panel. That'll separate the two. The other side is riveted, so there's no reason to mess with that. That gives you more room though to get underneath the carpet and pull it out. Now we're going to move the console storage bin. We're going to pop off these little caps here and move the nut inside. Do the same thing on the other side and release the storage bin. Now remove the rear screws for the console top plate. Remove the shift boot, just lift on the inside, pop the clips free. Now remove the additional two screws in the front here to remove the top plate.
To remove the rest of the console, there's two screws down here, which in our case we're already missing. You want to pop the glove box open, squeeze it together. There's two more up here. This side's the same way. There's two screws on the side and two screws at the top. The side you can reach easily. The top, you gotta remove this kick panel or knee panel to get to the screws. Now we can pull it away from the dash a little bit, reach back and disconnect the stereo. We're gonna remove the radio to make it easier. They do make these tools you can pick up pretty much any stereo store. It makes it easier to remove a factory radio. Most of you probably don't have a factory radio anymore, in which case it's just four screws and the radio's gonna come out. We removed our shifter handle. At this point, you can lift the console out, lift it out. In our case, we have an aftermarket shifter. It's got a very tall stud. We're actually not sure what kind of shifter this is. It's gonna make it a little bit tighter. With a stock shifter or most aftermarkets, it'll come out pretty easily. The last thing we need to remove before we can install our new carpet is a bracket back here for the console. Now you can remove the carpet. Best thing to do is sort of fold it towards the center of the car. bracket for the relay you don't necessarily have to remove. We find it is easier to remove it because if not, you're going to have to cut an X in the carpet and sort of fit it around it. It's only two bolts. I would take it off. It makes your life a lot easier. Before we begin the installation of the new carpet, you want to vacuum out the floor and get it as clean as possible. You probably noticed we did some repairs to the floor on this car. Our cross member was damaged, so we replaced it. If you do have any questions about this installation, there's a full video on our website showing you how to do so. Now we're ready to begin the new carpet, getting it prepped to actually install on the car. What you want to do, the easiest way to do it is to take your old carpet, which I know is kind of nasty and grimy, lay it on top of the new carpet and use it as a template. Just get an idea where the basic holes are going to be. We'll cut some small openings and put the carpet in the car. What we'll do is line it up. We're just gonna cut an X. Make sure you have a nice fresh razor blade for this part. It makes it a lot easier. We'll actually trim it in the car. We'll do the same thing with the rear section here. Okay, and the rest of the trimming we'll do in the car. Now we're gonna put the carpet in the car. Kind of put it in folded. I'm just going to sort of work it down roughly in the place where it's going to go. We can tell the e-brake is really holding this up, so we're going to start our trimming over in this area here and give ourselves some more room to work with. Remember, make smaller cuts to start with. You can always cut it more, but you can never cut it less. Now I'll open up the shifter area as well.
Once you get the center two pieces cut out for your shifter and your e-brake, pretty much then you want to work your way around. I usually start at the back, get underneath the seat brace, trim where necessary. This carpet doesn't require a lot of trim, but you will take some off, maybe the edges, maybe the back. Then you work your way up front, figure out how much carpet can go forward and trim the front if necessary as well. At this point, just kind of take your time, keep pushing down the carpet, make it as tight as possible and trim where necessary. I'll pull the studs through. Just put a little slit right over the stud. Just push down usually. It'll go right through. Now we'll start putting the interior back together. I'm going to start with the door sill plates, kick panels, and the rear quarter trim panel that we took the bolt out of earlier. The seatbelt covers are a commonly damaged item on box bodies, so while we have it apart, we're going to replace these as well. This one, as you can see, is pretty dried out and broken. Slide that off. The new one can kind of be difficult to fish up because of the curve of this. If you have a long, thin screwdriver, you can force it up in there. What I usually use is a piece of speaker wire, power wire, whatever you have handy. Fish that up through first. What you do is just pull it up through. Now we're going to cut out the hole for the seatbelt receiver over here. I'll do the same for the seatbelt receiver. You can sort of pull the carpet back, get an idea where the hole is, make it a little bit easier. Next to get started, then we cut it out. Now we're gonna cut a little access panel right in here for our breakers. We'll start with our ground. Now put the bracket in place. Now we'll cut right along the edge here. Now we're beginning reinstalling the console. Just prep it, just push down the carpet, bring up the two studs for the bracket. I'll bring the console body in. Mm. 
Since her car was actually missing a lot of the original hardware, we'll be using new hardware that's available in our interior screw kit that we sell for the Fox body. Now we're gonna do the top plate. First thing we're gonna do though is plug in the seat belt. Make sure you don't forget to plug everything in. Once the top plate's down, we can put the storage compartment back in. Once the bolts are in, you can reinstall the plastic trim covers. The HVAC trim up in the place. Now we can install the stereo. Start by reinstalling the back seat cushion. Last step is going to be to put the seats in. The rear holes we never cut out, so the easy thing to do here is go into the car with a punch. So you can locate the hole. Once the seats are bolted down, repeat the process on the other side and your insulation is finished. While there are a few other areas in the interior of our SSP car here that do need some work, putting in carpet gave the car a real nice fresh look. It makes it feel 100% nicer when you're actually driving the car. Insulation is not too bad, it's just time consuming. Figure in about three hours and you'll be back on the road in no time.